during the session. Um, so next session uh, for Foundation X, we also make early investments in disrupting crypto projects. So let me introduce Mind.ai, Krypton, Carry, and Cambria. Here's a poll from Mind.ai. Thank you for having us, thank you. I hope everyone's having a good time. So, my name is Paul Lee. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of Mind.ai. So today, I'm going to introduce you to what natural language reasoning engine is. We've been doing 12 years of R&D, and it took us 12 years to get here. So I'm going to try to condense this into a seven-minute presentation. So a little food for thought. So we were in Geneva at the United Nations Conference for AI for Good Summit. And in the picture right now is Stephen Ibaraki, who's one of our investors as well as advisors. He's the chairman of ACM and an expert in AI. And when he was asking the audience about the questions, what do you expect the AI to be? What's the questions that you have about AI? These were the questions that came up. The first one is, how do we incentivize young AI experts around the world to basically focus on something not just monetary, but something that is for social impact? The second question was, OK, right now, patent recognition, statistical analysis, data analysis is all good, and we have super calculators to do that. But is it possible to do reasoning? Is it really possible to think like a human being? And the third question was, is there ever going to be super intelligent AI? So these are the questions that we're trying to answer today. So the first wave of AI started back in the day. It's like the Windows operating system. Basically, something that's handcrafted, something that has constraints. The problem here is there's no learning capability, poor handling of data, and it only is based on a decision tree. Now the second wave of AI. You've all heard of IBM Watson. You've all heard of the AlphaGo's of the world. But these are mere probability calculators, and they're just super calculators. The statistical learning abilities are very, very good and superb. However, individually, they're very unreliable. And also, you have to understand the fact that it's a black box. When an input comes in, then it has to funnel through a black box where you don't know how it got to a solution. That's a major problem in medicine, a major problem in law, major problem in drug discovery as well. So we're saying, how can we improve this? I mean, even AlphaGo doesn't understand that it's playing the game of Go. So the third wave of AI. This simple canonical structure, this simple triangular structure, took 12 years to make. And it's basically saying that everything around us, all information, needs context. With context alone, for example, a word like love you need to know whether that's platonic love, whether that's romantic love, whether that's gay love. Without context, you can't understand it, and nor can a machine. So the third wave of AI is basically about contextual adaptation. It's real-time interactive learning. It's about self-directed learning. When we as human beings look at this picture, we don't say there's 68.92623% chance of this being a milking cow. We don't think like that. We say, okay, it has four legs, so it must be an animal. It has spots, okay, it has an udder, so it is a milking cow. That's the logical reasoning that we do as human beings, not probability or statistical analysis. But what is reasoning? Reasoning consists of thinking, cognition, as well as intellect. Okay? It needs to have these three components, abductive reasoning, deductive reasoning, as well as inductive reasoning. Not just one, not just two, but all three. It needs to work in concert. Without that, you can't say anything or anyone is reasoning. So the third wave of AI. We've built a core reasoning engine that we call a canonical. This is the unit of reasoning. With the primary going to the resultant, through a context, we have established a way to provide abduction on the left, deduction on the right, and then induction at the bottom. Through this, 
it can scale up like the neural networks, but it's not just focused on one domain. We have an international patent on this, not just on the canonical structure, but also in its applications as well. So what's the differentiation between all the other AIs out there and us? We started from scratch. We didn't base our thesis on something that was already done. We did it from scratch. New symbolic paradigm. It's a natural language reasoning model. It's not processing. Augmented topological network allows us to overcome the brittleness that the symbolic paradigm had. Now we've overcome it. Now we can use it in multiple domains. It's linear and qualitative reasoning, not quantitative. The qualitative part allows us to be human understandable. That means we can trace back. We don't need shit tons of data. We don't need millions and millions and millions of playing data. We just need to tell it how to play the, the game Go, and it'll be able to play it. It's transparent. That means we know exactly what's going on in that black box. We can use it in medicine and be sure that the outcome we have, we can trust. It's in any language. It can be in Chinese, it can be in Arabic, it can be in Korean, it can be in English. For it, it can be in a computational language like Java also. It's universal, not just in law, finance, drug discovery. It can work in any domain. So why blockchain? We want to incentivize everyone around the world to provide us with the ontologies. We want to store these ontologies on the blockchain to make it immutable, to make it secure, to make it scalable. And we want everyone around the world to be incentivized when they're providing their data to us. Just like Wikipedia, but they're being incentivized. Through this, we believe we can democratize AI, not just in one country or one corporation. AI is too powerful for that. It has to be decentralized. So the two most important things about Mind AI is learning to learn and meta-theoretics. When a critical mass of ontologies have been gained, Mind AI will be able to go out and learn on its own. It will be able to surf the web. It will be able to read millions of journals on its own and pass that knowledge and then form its own theories. It's scary, yes, but it's exciting at the same time. So future and beyond, what can we apply it to now, today? Drug discovery, shopping assistant in e-commerce, virtual mentors in education, automated coding. What about asset management in finance? Diagnosis and new treatment paradigms in medicine. Also, a personal secretary like Jarvis in Iron Man. But this is just the primary goals. Electricity was born literally to power a light bulb. Then it started to power machines. Then it started to power computers. New industries started to merge. And that's what I believe and what we believe that AI is going to do for humanity. This simple canonical structure, this simple triangle, is now scratching the surface of what we really call artificial general intelligence. We're not saying we've solved it. We're saying we've cracked the first surface. So let me leave you with our video as an introductory video, as an ending. Please visit us at mind.ai. We're going to be out there, so please come and talk to us and then help us move humanity forward. Thank you. Artificial intelligence is the new arms race of our time. With the world's wealthiest corporations and nations hoarding the most innovative scientists, engineers, and researchers, it's deterring our collective brain power from creating projects that may solve global humanitarian crises to merely producing systems for profit, surveillance, and war. The AI arms race rapidly progressed us through the second wave of AI in which deep learning through brute force statistical computations led to superhuman achievements in several domains. Second wave systems produce extremely accurate results, but its mistakes can be fatal, as we've seen with recent autonomous vehicles. To make matters worse, it's extremely difficult to pinpoint what went wrong within these black boxes. Mind AI was created to tackle the limitations of these second wave systems and bring forth the third wave of AI. MIND is an artificial intelligence powered by revolutionary, internationally patented data structures 
to perform deductive, inductive, and abductive reasoning. By parsing natural language and breaking down information to its most fundamental level, mind is able to contextualize every detail. This entire process is transparent, allowing us to pinpoint and surgically correct exact points of error. We plan to open source the mind engine and distribute the ontological database to promote a democratization of power in the AI space today. Building a community of intelligent minds around the mind ecosystem can allow us to turn the tide of the AI arms race, promote benevolent progress rather than narrow self-interests, and ultimately, advance humanity as one. Thanks very much.